I have a present for you. Oh yeah? Look what came in the post. Oh! Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's take it somewhere to do the unboxing. Someone in the shade, please. Okay, where should we where should we do our unboxing? Somewhere somewhere pretty <laughs> with a nice background. But oh. we don't really have anywhere like that at the moment. Everywhere is a mess. Uh, the concrete table, I guess. Always the concrete table. <laughs> yep. Alright, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing? Oi! <laughs> My decoration! <laughs> oh, this is very exciting. Tip it and pull it. No, 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 we should, pull, we should tip it. Tip it. Well, package. Tight. Jiggle it. It's got some cables. Good handle. Ooh. Lift it. Oh, that's so easy. Yeah. Car cable for the car, AC cable, solar charging cable, instruction booklet, portable power station. Cube. Okay, let's try this thing out. The Blue Yeti AC180 is a portable power station offering up to 1,800 watts of power and a power lifting mode, which means it can go up to 2,700 watts. This means you can power up to 99% of common devices with no problem, including heating devices. As well as the AC outputs, you also have your USB outputs and a wireless charging pad on the top. Put an ASMR alert. Oh. oh. Yes. Wireless charging? Yeah, it's magic. That's a really satisfying pop, I love it. So although it came half charged, we're just going to charge it up to 100%. We're plugging it into our wall socket, which is receiving power from our solar panels on our roof. This should charge it pretty quickly because it's basically AC power. Bluetti also sell portable solar panels, which you can buy as well if you don't have panels of your own already. And you can plug them in to the unit with the cable that we saw earlier. But for us, it's just easier to plug them into the AC system. excited to have this new piece of equipment because it's going to help us move forward with some of the plans that we have for this area of the land. Over the last few months we've been working on a bit more of a full site plan, we're not fully there yet, but we do now have more of an idea of what we want to build in this little corner of the land and it's going to need power so it's really good to have this portable power station that we can use up here. We have considered bringing a cable up from the house but we're quite far from the house at this point and the solar setup that we have on the house is quite well adjusted to the energy needs of the house so it's not really designed we didn't design it in mind of running anything else really apart from the appliances the fridge and the stuff that we have right now in the house so having something portable that we can bring up here and use up here and power the various different pieces of infrastructure that we're going to have is really handy i did want to share these plans with you because i thought it would be interesting for you to see what sort of things we might be working on over the next few years and it'd be cool to hear your input as well first let's have a look at what we've got here in this area at the moment this is the old goat enclosure so the soil is pretty bad it's not somewhere where we're going to be growing directly into the ground what we have got here at the moment is the polytunnel obviously you can see and i planted a few fruit trees and nut trees along the back edge here earlier this year this winter we've got some very old wild plums which don't really give us anything at all and we'll probably get rid of those we might see if we can graft onto the rootstock i'm not really sure 
Um, there's a big pomegranate tree which is productive enough, we'll probably keep that and apart from that there's not really much else in this area apart from a mess. What we want to put in this area in the long run is another polytunnel, we'd like to have one for growing. A second polytunnel more for like propagation, benches, um, keeping lots of seeds and little trees and things like that in um, rather than directly growing in. We also want to put a little garden shed up here to store some tools and just have a nice little um, storage area where things can be nicely organized maybe like a little potting shed type thing we would like to plant more trees along the back wall plant a row of tall fast growing trees of some variety across the south and the west side of this area to provide a bit of shade because it's super hot out here and the trees that I have planted are struggling a little bit we want to put some nurse trees or companion trees next to the trees that I've already planted I'm probably thinking like maybe false acacia because that seems to grow quite well here it grows tall really quickly and it produces a lot of shade it's also a nitrogen fixer so once the tree next to it is established the idea would be you would cut down the false acacia and it would release its nitrogen from its roots into the ground which is a bonus we'd like to build a little shaded canopy area somewhere around the middle to um, to keep things in pots under because we really struggle with uh, keeping things shaded in the summer um, things that are in pots and need watering and stuff and our big plan for this area is in the back corner to build a office slash studio type place where Mauro can work, um, where, we, where I can keep like craft and art material and textile material and wool and stuff which takes up a lot of space in our tiny house, it would be good to have it somewhere else. We do have an office in our little house but we'd like something slightly bigger maybe with two desks in it so that him and me can both work in there at the same time, we'll have our own little spaces. And we'd love to do it as a natural build um, with straw bales, so we're looking into that. Obviously these are like super long term plans, but what they all have in common, or what a lot of this stuff has in common, is that it needs power. <laughs> so the main thing is that the office or studio will need light and will need to be able to run laptops. Something like this is perfect. It can charge a laptop 17 times over with one single full charge. And um, bear in mind that what we would probably do is plug this into a solar panel that we would have on the roof of, or somewhere around this area and have it charging from a solar panel so during the day it will be charging as well as discharging if we're using it so it's really just overnight that you need to think about what it can do with one single charge because during the day you could very easily just be charging it as you're using it at least that's our plan we also need pressurized water up here in various different points we need some sort of irrigation system in our growing polytunnel we need taps with pressurized water i would also like to have a hose in the propagation polytunnel so that i can go around and spray all the seed trays and pots and things like that for pressurized water we need a pump and uh, the most convenient thing seems to be a pump that could run off uh, an electric pump that could run off something like this that's something that i actually want right now before we build any of these other things so that's something that i've been working on this morning those are parts of our long-term like site plans for this area so if they seem interesting to you keep watching because over the next few years that's kind of the route that we want to go down in the meantime i'm going to finally get some pressurized water from a hose in the polytunnel and water the tomatoes Any uh, further thoughts on the Bluetti? Yeah, well, we see these boxes as essentially an extension of our solar setup. It, it has the added benefit, apart from like being like a redundant system, that it's essentially a backup for when, uh, I don't know, we have a couple of uh, not sunny days and we need a, a boost of power. It would allow me to charge my laptop and continue working or 
plug in the freezer in uh, the fridge in an emergency or, or stuff like that. Yeah, looking into it, this box actually holds um, capacity wise 50% of what our main solar setup holds, which is really good. <laughs> it's a much more economical way of extending our solar setup than buying new batteries or extending the whole system that we've got. But also it has the added benefit obviously of being portable, so, so it kind of serves two really important functions for us. About the portability of the device, it weighs around, um, it weighs 16 kilos. I find it okay to carry, uh, maybe not all day, but, <laughs> <laughs> but for odd jobs here and there, um, it's okay to carry and you can always put it in a wheelbarrow, so that's okay. But I would say that if I was going to use it for like maybe less power, less for power tools and more for charging electronic mm -hmm. devices or powering just some lights, I would probably get uh, the smaller uh, version of it. One thing that I wanted to mention is, and you like this feature as well, um, is that this model has a eco mode where it turns itself off when it's not in use, which other power stations don't necessarily do. And uh, it really runs down the battery if they don't do that. And they can also just turn themselves on like the fans will turn on in the middle of the night and wake you up, which we've <laughs> experienced. Um, so I really like that feature. I like that it saves me from having to explain that <laughs> to people because I usually yes. have to explain it and it's a very long explanation Actually, for something really yeah, that's worse than, simple. Yeah. yeah, so just not having to say that, just like, just yeah. use it, don't have to worry about turning it off yeah. or turn, on, uh, turn off it uh, on that's its own. True. Yeah. We haven't used it that much yet, but we also like the smart app control, which means that you can monitor the charge and the usage um, and what it's what it's using the consumption remotely from your phone so uh so we haven't had much use of it yet but when we have got everything set up in that area of the land i can imagine we'll be using that quite yeah. a lot to see how it's doing down there because we're probably just gonna leave it with a panel and maybe with some devices plugged in um, it'd be good to like, like set up an alarm and just be notified yeah. on your phone hey this is running low that kind yeah. of thing it's really handy and yeah that's uh those are our thoughts on the bluetti ac 180 can I say like small, like small kind of details. small yeah, details, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. industrial design wise. <laughs> I like that it's like a cube, like it doesn't have I really, like, I like the design. Yeah. yeah, the design that that it's a cube, like nothing kind of protrudes out of it. It's uh, <laughs> but, but that's just like me, like my main OCD well, that, that I like things that sort of like fit like the three pieces. I can't imagine how it would be designed any different. With, like, well, I've seen no, no, no. Yeah. I've seen others that like the handles come out of oh, it. Okay. Like it's not like a cubic shape. Um, like the cubicness. Yeah. yeah. And also I like that all the stuff is on one side. That's yeah, um, I like that. I like the wireless charging pad, which Mauro's got his phone on. As though it's charging, but it's actually not. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't, I, we don't have any yeah, phones like that. It's a handy surface. It's, it's very it. cool. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Bluetti for sending us this box. We really like it. And thank you for supporting our channel and our project. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in another one.